beauty of Jesus, today is 5-5, a day of double grace, a day of his favor, a day, you know, the beauty of Jesus is his grace. It's his life that was given to us and for us. And it brings us out of lack and into restoration. Brings us out of sickness and into healing. Brings us out of hopelessness and into faith and hope. Brings us out of being feeling rejected, set aside, pushed down, into being accepted in the beloved and being the one he chooses and the one he adores. His grace is so beautiful. And when we sing about the beauty of Jesus, we are opening up a well of glory and salvation. You see, the Lord wants to announce to you. He wants to announce to you to expect goodness from him. He was the one in the storm who kept you. He is the one whose glory is coming after the storm. He is the one who is releasing a 55-mile radius of grace, heaped upon grace, where a well of salvation will open up in this region. And many will come in and know the kingdom. They will know the king who is the lover, who is the friend, who is the savior and deliverer. This will be an apostolic hub of his glory and his grace. It is established. The Lord has leveled out the mountains and obstacles of the enemy. And the Lord is riding on the winds. He has chased adversity out of your region. He has said to the enemy thus far no more. He is establishing his holy boundaries. And he is releasing his joy. Ha! <laughs> oh, the, the, the times of sorrow, the times of grief, those times that we walk through and we cling to him and we trust him. And then in a moment, he delivers us out of that place and brings us into the fullness of his joy and the fullness of who he is, into the fullness of hope, hope which is the expectation of goodness, hope which is the expectation that God will fulfill every promise, which then breathes on the wings of faith and causes faith to lift you up above every circumstance and to soar right into the Father's arms of love. The Lord is announcing it's a new day and a new season. You've overcome. You have overcome. So as we sing about the beauty of Jesus, oh, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. There is no one in the heavens or on the earth. Do you know when the birds sing in the spring, they're singing over the seeds. And then you know that there have been times, like I just moved to California, and they have had rain and rain and rain, and the drought is broken, and they have what they call a super bloom, the beautiful flowers, because God said, he showed me, and he showed many, that he was going to overturn the enemies, but let me tell you what he's doing here. He has destroyed the enemies that have held back the move of God, and the move of God is springing up, springing forth, and going forward. And there is going to be such a bloom and a harvest because God has leveled out the enemy's camp and the enemy is being scattered and routed out and Jesus is being lifted high. He is being glorified. He is being magnified. There's promises on the inside of you that he is awakening. He is awakening. He is awakening them. Seeds that were dormant. Seeds that you thought that will never happen. It is being resurrected because the resurrection power of Jesus is overturning every curse and releasing his kingdom because he will have his bride and he will have his harvest. So let's give him a shout. He's so beautiful. Hallelujah.
that powerful? I, I just want to, I was just thinking that literally, literally a year ago, as I know from Facebook memories, right? Nathaniel Wolf, and it may be to the day, I don't know, or on the calendar, but a year ago Nathaniel Wolf stood here and declared the super bloom. Do you guys remember that? He said there's a super bloom that's coming to this region. And um, wow, God just reaffirmed a year later, almost to the day, that there's a super balloon. I think there's something very, very significant in that. So praise God. Oh, let's just give him a hand. Amen. He has overcome. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tracy. That's just a appetizer. It's the main course we can feast on, camp out for a while, so praise God. Well, we welcome you guys this morning. Wow, I'm just a little bit overwhelmed. <laughs> praise God. Well, we welcome you all, and uh, was it seemed very real when you're singing about shouting hallelujah in the middle of the storm? Can anybody do that this week? I did. Yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. And we're all here to tell the tale. Amen. So we're going to take an offering in just a moment for the church, and then uh, later in the service we will have an offering specifically designated for our, our guests, Tracy and Loosely, third time that she's been with us, and uh, several of us were down this weekend at Rockwell, Texas, where Tracy was speaking at a women's conference for uh, Ledbetters there at Eastgate Community Church, uh, along with Stacy Campbell, and I know a few of you guys were there. Um, I kind of breezed in and out every once in a while. I was a guy, so I couldn't stay in. Um, but it was a powerful time. And, and Tom, yesterday, as we were getting ready to leave, he was like, man, I just wish we could all be together on Sunday. And, uh, but we have our assignments and we have our posts. And God's just doing tremendous things. Amen. So just a few announcements before we take an offering. Um, gosh, what are our announcements? Uh, I have to look. Hallelujah. There is so much stuff going on, so we do need mega grace um, this week. Uh, all of us in the last couple of weeks of our, our school, um, uh, a week from tomorrow night, we will have our graduation for um, Global Harvest School of Supernatural Ministry. Amen. And so that is open, not just to our students, but for those of you that want to come and celebrate with them. They have worked extremely hard the last eight months, and some of them are still working furiously to get their work finished, amen, I see some smiles, and hallelujah, they're going to get all that work in, praise God, so we're going to celebrate on Monday, May 13th, that's at 7 p.m., and our, our guest speaker, who will also help us with a time of impartation for our graduates, will be Joe Moody, and Joe's been here before, Joe will be with us next Sunday. She and Tracy are just giving a one-two punch, amen, to the to the region, and we so appreciate both of them. So, also, Global Harvest Christian School, our kindergarten through 12th grade school, that graduation will be May 16th at 7 p.m. at Crystal Rock. So come and be a part of that, even if you don't have kids in the school. God just really shows yeah. off. Yeah. And shows off what he's done in the school, and... Uh, and we'll talk more about that next week, but um, praise God. Lots and lots happening. Be praying for um, Jamie and myself, and uh, as we have much to do, be praying for our teachers, uh, as they have much to do in the last two weeks. Be praying for Martha. Um, she's been under the weather, but she's doing better. Amen. Amen. By faith, she's doing better. So, praise God. God's good. Now. Uh, let's take an offering, and uh, as we always do, um, let's just make our offering declaration together. Uh, let's stand together. I want to introduce, and you guys, she doesn't need a lot of introduction. Um, she's been with us before. Uh, I have described her on Facebook as an author slash poet slash intercessor slash prophet slash fiery, fiery preacher. Um, you know, she's a Renaissance woman. Hallelujah, Tracy Amen. and Lucy. So let's just welcome Tracy 
where the Lord goes to mantle you today. <laughs> God is so good. Isaiah 55, we'll start in verse 1. Ho. Ho. You know when you hear people go, ho. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Burst of expectation. It means to expect something good. Ho, everyone who thirsts. You who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. I want to announce to you, this is a season of delight Ooh, and abundance. Yes. Remember, in a season of delight and abundance, you do want to store up some treasures in your heart and for the generations coming. <laughs> Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. God's a covenant keeping God. And you are about to see so many covenant promises manifest. You're going to be astounded by the goodness of God. According to the faithful mercies that have been shown to David, behold, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you will call a nation you do not know, and a nation which knows you not will run to you. Because of the Lord your God, even the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord. And the Lord will have compassion on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. It's a time for the wicked to come to the Lord. Because God wants to pardon. He wants to bring in his harvest. Hallelujah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it to bear and sprout, harvest, <laughs> and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Amen. For you will go out with joy. Amen. You will go out with joy. Ooh. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, 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 joy. <laughs> and be led forth with peace. And the mountains and the hills will break forth into shouts of joy before you. Ooh. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And instead of the thorn bush, the cypress will come up. And instead of the nettle, the myrtle will come up. And it will be a memorial to the Lord for an everlasting sign, which will not be cut off. Father, I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you that this house has come through. They've come through. Oh, there's been some pushing and some crushing and the enemy's strategies to try to cast out, tear down. But God, you came through for them. And Father, you're raising them up as a sign and a wonder of the goodness of God. And you're rolling away the reproach of every word and prayer and curse and hex and vex and incantation. That is try to stop what you're doing. You're rolling it away. The blood of Jesus has washed over it. And Father, your glory is going to fill this house in such an astounding way, Lord. Five, five. Your grace heaped upon grace in John 1, 16. It says of Jesus and of his fullness we have all received. And grace heaped upon grace. Five is the number of grace. It's the number of divine 
favor, and grace. It is a gift from God. It is not something that we have earned. It is something He gives. He's the one who's overturned the enemy. In this past season, there were things that seemed hopeless. But this is what He did. And this is called awakening. He looked at you and saw your longing. His grace wrapped around you. Heaven's love in his embrace. He turned your eyes from shame's pain, and he opened them to see his love was your gain. One look of love awakens me. All of hope, all of hope in eternity I see. His gaze of love liberating, demolishing, disheartening lies. Eyes of fiery love gaze into me. And when I'm saying you, he's speaking about, he's saying you. I, me, I'm saying you. Do you understand? I want you to hear this. So just receive. Eyes of fiery love gaze, in, gaze into me. Dark hopelessness now must flee. Eyes of hope imparting faith to me. No longer blind, I now see. See through eyes awakening. Hopeful in him, I now believe. The glory oil of joy fuels my soul. Greater is God who resides in me. His life of love awakens me. With faith, I run the way of love. Now awakened and flourishing, promised destiny, I clearly see. For eyes of love awaken me. The reaching of faith. Believing faith I now receive. Obtaining promises spoken to me. His eyes of love, they pierce the doubt. His love releases heaven's shout. With new vision I see and I believe. Awaken to run and win this race. Love has showered me with grace. Power of God to go all the way. Unstoppable. I'm one with him. Eyes of love make all things new. Jesus, the prize I'm running to. One look from the Father can change everything. Do you understand that? When he says he's gazing into you, and he's gazing here, and he's looking, one look, one gaze, one glance of his eyes, when he turns and looks our way, and he says he will literally guide us with his eyes, so when he's gazing, he's looking to lock gaze and say, just look at me. Don't look here. Don't look there. <laughs> Don't look at that. Look at me. Because I'm taking you forward. And it's time of awakening. And I am breaking through into things that you are going to be so astounded. I hear that Lord saying he is instructing you and guiding you. And his powerful good grace, heaped upon grace, is filling you. There's a grace fountain opening. His eyes of flaming fire. <laughs> I, I've been just undone by the goodness of God in this season. And I, I want to weave some testimonies and some stories in and out. Because I want to stir your faith up. Yeah. I want to stir your faith up. <laughs> and I want you to think. God's promises and God's, God's ways are so different. Now, last time I was here, just found out we were going to be moving. Realized later, at the end, after I moved, went back, the Lord's like, go back and look at this dream and this dream. And I had been in Columbia, and I had bought the lady that had worked with us to buy our house in California. I had bought her and I each a gift, and, and, and I realized the significance of it, that Holy Spirit had led me to it. I knew it, because I wasn't going to get it. I walked out of the store and was walking around and said, Dude, is that what you want me to get? And he's like, get her one and get you one too. I'm like, okay. So here's, I'll, I'll explain just a moment. I'm just stirring up faith here. So right before, at the end of July, I had a vision, and I might have shared it, but I woke up to this dream vision of this huge hummingbird hovering in front of me, and it was so beautiful and, and just filled with these colors, these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful colors. 
And when I awoke, um, I, can, I could read all the details to you. Maybe I should read a few because they're pretty stunning. And I did, but I did put them all down so I could share. Um, and when I woke up, I felt that something was about to happen. And the hummingbird had landed on my left hand, on my pointer finger, and my thumb. And in that moment, I was filled with such great joy. And that same morning when I went for my walk, the light that I began to see when breakthroughs about to appear was there. And I, I'm telling you, I, I, I've learned to pay attention. There's this, this little light that begins to show, and it, can, and it opens up when God is about to do something. So I've had to learn, pay attention, because it expands. So as I looked at what hummingbirds meant, they're truly a marvel of God. Their rapid success from a small beginning. Ooh, I'm using this over you guys. It is like sweet as honey. They're flying jewels. They're compact. They have strong muscles. They're the tiniest of all birds. So they might be little old me's. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, when you die to self, and you don't try to build, and you don't try to become something, and you let God do the work, and it may look small at first, and it may be this, but he's like, I want to do something even more. <laughs> Tiniest of all birds, small ideas or concepts that may possess much potential and power. They have high maneuverability to hover. They travel at speeds of 65 miles per hour, and then they can come to a complete stop. They can fly forward, straight up, straight down, sideways, and backwards. I feed the hummers. I love them. They obtain nectar and sweet treasures of life and eat insects. And they focus on the good, the beauty, and joy in people. That was from the Barbie Breathitts um, on, on dreams, that thing with the hummingbird. This other part is from um, just a wiki answer in Wikipedia. Another states that hummingbirds symbolize freedom, energy, tireless joy, and accomplishing things that are said to be impossible. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> As a side note, hummingbirds are the only birds that can fly backwards. And then this was an unknown source. The tongue of the hummingbird is able to bypass the tough, bitter outer layers of the plant in order to find hidden treasure beneath. <laughs> Has God been speaking to us about our tongues and our words? I want the message I shared with the women yesterday. Is your mouth a womb or a tomb? Because our words are life and death. They either kill or they bring life. And are we agreeing with the promises of God? Or are we speaking the whispers of the enemy or the negative news of the world? <coughs> we need to know that our tongue can get past what looks negative and find the sweetness of God. Amen. So what was really interesting is the scripture um, that I just was so, it's in, in uh, Proverbs, and it's, it's how blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her profit is better than the profit of silver and her gain better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing she desires compares with her. Long life is in her right hand. And in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are those who hold her fast. The thumb is a symbol of power. It's the emblem of the warrior. It's executive strength, manual strength, and brain power for executive ability. It also is the symbol for the apostle. The, the finger is, uh, can represent spiritual outreach and activity, and the pointer finger, which it landed on, also um, represents the prophet. The left hand symbolizes emotional strength and per perspective and sentimentality. And the Lord said to me, something is about to emerge. A suddenly. When I shared it one of, with one of my prophetic intercessor friends, she says, whoa, hummingbirds are nimble, fast, and defy normal flight patterns. Something that you, unusual is about to spring forth. So this was in July. 
And then right after that, I went. I was. I had a dream right before I went to California, and I didn't know that uh, about a month later my husband would be getting a job offer. But I had this vision of I seven and I nine, and it was these two freeway signs. And I knew in my spirit it's California, but there is not an I seven and an I nine in California. But the Lord said, "Look it up." So as I researched, I found out that the Highway ninety nine. They have thought for the, about a few years ago, the freeway committees, government, they've been considering renaming, rechanging it, renumbering it to I-7 or I-9. Hello. <laughs> and the Lord began to speak to me and had me, has had me begin to study it out. I feel like, as, as we know, California has led this nation in a lot of things. Right. And it's seen a great move of God. And we should, not, we should not want to see its destruction, but see that she would become the light and all God has called it to be. Right. Right. <laughs> and so in this, as I began to research, I found out that the 99 historically used to go all the way from Mexico all the way to Canada. It was the place that the farmers would take their harvest upon. Hello, <laughs> and then guess what in January Mario Marilla had had a vision does anybody know who he is he had a vision um, a few years ago about the 99 in California and it being the glory of the Lord that this pathway of glory that he began um, I think it was while we were was when I was um, one of my friends said I think his first outreach um, they had over 300 salvations in, in this small community and so he's starting these, these things. So, so here's this thing. The Lord is like, I'm doing something. Pay attention. So on September 21st, I had the second hummingbird dream. In my dream, a huge hummingbird was hovering in front of me. I was walking with a woman named Shirley. I couldn't see Shirley. I just knew her name. Shirley means pure and peaceful. And it's a scripture 2911. This is the one who gives his strength and might to his people. This is the Lord giving us his kiss of peace. Walking means living by faith and being in step with the spirit. At the time, the only Shirley I knew was a prophetic artist. I felt God's promises and that he was going to be releasing new creativity. And then, um, but I, what I forgot to say is right after I got from back from California in August, a hummingbird that I had never seen that one like that came and stayed in my yard, was camped out in one of my little bushes, trees, and I'd never seen one like this. And he was there for a week. Beautiful. Just so, and he would come to the feeders and then go back to the bush. So when the Lord told me to go back and look at the dreams, <laughs> we weren't sure where to move. It was just kind of a difficult transition. And we ended up, we just really sought the Lord, and we ended up pulling our offer on a first house we put one on and put an offer on a home on Canaan Circle. <laughs> Those of you that don't know, Canaan was the promised land. Papa said to me, you'll have to war. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> Remember? Warlike. <laughs> when he said to look at the dream, all of a sudden I realized the lady that we were working with in this subdivision, her name was Shirley. I had not met Shirley. The only Shirley I knew was a prophetic artist. And all of a sudden, and guess what I bought us when we, I was in Columbia? Two hand-painted purses with hummingbirds on them. Mm. So I shared <laughs> all of that with Shirley. <laughs> right? She didn't respond for a few days. I think she was going, who is that? <laughs> but you know what? I knew the Lord said to because it's wonder. We can't lose the wonder of God. Right. Now let me right. tell you what else happened that day that he told me to look. I'm stirring up your faith here. Yeah. Okay? A hummingbird 
came and landed, I just put my feeders out. I don't even have any trees, anything in my backyard. It is like hard, dry dirt. <laughs> but I'm like, I gotta have my feeders and I gotta go get something to put back there. And my husband's job has kept him so busy and he's in another location for five months. That's the next story. That's a really awesome story. Anyways, this hummingbird comes. It's like the one that visited me. And it's, this, it's the ruby-throated one. We never got those in Utah. And when the light hits them, the red, just it just it just shines. <laughs> and it's just like the one in my dream. It's just like the one that came to the house. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, I'm just undone. You are leading us even when, I mean, I wrote it down because I knew it was significant. And I only knew the parts. Something suddenly is about to emerge. God is doing things. What you don't know is when Randy proposed to me 29 years ago, in the proposal I said, no, I don't want to live in Utah. I, I love you, you're a great guy, but I don't want to marry you. <laughs> I don't want to live here. Seriously, I'm just being honest. And I didn't know if I could... Um, I didn't know how I would, I would you know, I didn't believe her. I hadn't been delivered. I hadn't been healed. I hadn't been fully mentored. My mentors rejected me when somebody lied about me. So, you know, I wasn't even really walking with the Lord at the time, except for that I still knew I loved him and he had saved me. I got right back with him after we got married. A couple months later. <laughs> A few months later. And he promised me we wouldn't live in Utah forever. 29 years later, <laughs> when after the Lord told me I finished my assignment last year, and I didn't know how that was going to transition, and that transitioned well. The Lord used me to restore people to their callings and their dreams, and the one I passed the baton to was it was his family that had planted the original Apostolic Prophetic Center in Farmington that I had never known had been there. It had been shut 22 years when I, they gave me the keys. There had been nothing Christian in that city all that time. The Lord had me redig the well there, speak into his life, never knowing. I just, you know, he'll be on the board, you know. And now he is taking the center to the next place. So suddenly... Someone gets restored to ministry, Amen. to their calling, and to their prophetic promises and destiny. So my husband, in his job, um, they've got him on a special project that started this. It started in April, and he is over um, in El Segundo, which is uh, right near the coast, and so. They gave him the choice to stay in hotels, which he'd already been doing for five months. He was done. Or they put him in a hotel, in, a, in an apartment. I've always wanted to live on the beach. We are, we, so we have our home in Riverside. And his company, which this is a dream. Remember where it says, why are you paying for stuff, you know? <laughs> his company is paying for us for five months have a little apartment on the beach. <laughs> I talk about the goodness of God. Yeah, I mean, God. guys, we have so, we put so much into the soil in Utah and the nations, and we are seeing God just say, here you go. When he was telling me, though, this was me, I, the move was so different, so, so like, didn't go as easy as the last one. The last one was so easy. And I'm like, you want me to help set up another place. <laughs> but it's furnished. And, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just sweet. It's a sweet little apartment right on the Esplanade in Redondo Beach. And so this is Daddy, all right? I wrote down some, um, some meanings of these uh, to my notes. I love dolphins. Last week when I was there, and I just, um, I just come home from my mom's, and I, I got to spend one night over there, and then I had to go back over to Riverside. But I was sitting out uh, on the little, little patio, and um, all of a sudden, the school of dolphins, very close, starts coming in. And then this Monday, 
and they did again, and little baby dolphins, and I hear Daddy say, I'm doing this just for you. And you know what, it made me feel so loved, but you know what he was speaking to me? I do this for my kids if they just see. If they would just take the time to pause and see. Because he's that good, you guys. So my, my whole transition was not easy. Um, we didn't know when we were going to move. That the one thing fell through, but God got, came through with a better offer. And it just, you know, we were just having, we was having to fight delays. You know, the enemy was trying to delay. But in a couple days before I moved, Daddy sent. This was when I was still in Farmington. My husband wasn't back yet. We, we moved. We left Utah on 222 which is a promise of so many things for me. <laughs> and and I, I knew I completed my assignment, and I had learned to love the people there, and I had learned to forgive, and I had learned so much. And just, you know, just God is so good. He sent 12 eagles into the field across from my house. I had mm -hmm. we had eagles. They came, they mostly come, um, they come through October through February. But I'd never, there'd only ever been a few. And I had written an article the year before about the apostolic glory that was coming, about when the prophetic and the apostolic really begin to move together. And for almost three hours, those 12 eagles were in that field. And the presence of God filled my home. And he said, this is your sending. I'm sending you. And I want you to know that now is the time for the apostolic glory to begin to flood the earth. That now is the time. You can read that article. It's on my website if you haven't read it. It's, just, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing story. You'll see yourself, you know, victory in it. <laughs> I was undone. The presence of the Lord... You see, I've been there for 30 years, and no one was throwing a farewell party. And the one time my friend, we decided she wanted to, but we didn't know when we were moving. And um, and then when we decide we're going to try to combine it with a meeting, the person who almost had destroyed my heart is there when I. And I'm like, what kind of farewell is this? <laughs> I mean, I'd forgiven them. I was fine. But it was like, you know, you go to something and it's like, so I'm sitting with the Father going, is this how I'm leaving? And then this happens. And all of a sudden, because you know what I have learned over the years? I'd much rather have the applause of heaven and the kisses from my Father that I just read about in the world. Go ahead and clap. Come on. Woo! Yeah. Your life. Then have all men roll out the red carpet and say, Woo, you know, most people don't even know the battles that I've done. Most people don't even know the ones I fought for that Daddy does. Yeah. And I have been so excited about this season because 12 is the number of apostolic. And these, these, this time in my article I write about the golden eagles, because two, um, two had um, come um, when I wrote the word, and um, was it three? Anyways, <laughs> might have been three at that time. Anyhow, but when these 12 came, they were the ball. And so I knew the, the number, and there were two juniors. There were 10 adults and two juniors. And um, how I wished I had a good camera. I just, God, I wanted a camera. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sitting there going, I'm trying to take pictures with my iPhone. And, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you shouldn't have bought the other thing. You should get the camera. <laughs> you know, and it's just, it was just so incredible. And I just, he's like, I'm releasing my government. And when, mm -hmm. remember back, I said Isaiah 7 and Isaiah 9. Isaiah 7 is talking about Jesus that's coming, and it's talking about these wicked rulers. So I looked up their names, and it was self-pleasure. And all these different things, I just, the details, that's probably on my website, too. 
And then Isaiah 9 is that the Lord's, the Lord's going to deal with these, and Jesus is the one who's coming to release his government. And 12 is the number of his government. So all these things that are coming together, and this is, this is what's been so significant to me about what the Lord is doing. Because he's saying, sons and daughters, I delight in you. And you're destined for glory. His glory is his goodness. It's his loving kindness. His glory, when his glory comes, miracles happen. Amen. People are healed in a moment. When he reveals his glory, he's saying to you, I am good. And I want to show you my goodness. Maybe you don't believe that I'm good because circumstances haven't turned out the way that you thought that they would. But watch me turn them around. You may have been believing, you guys, when we moved to Farmington four years ago to plant the, the Prophetic Apostolic Center, the Abundance Center, I thought I would, that was it. I was living there forever. So I lay, and I'd, I'd already, I'd laid that dream down many times. I'm never going back to the land you gave me a heart for. Although there was one time I didn't want to go back, <laughs> many years. But he gave me such a love for where I was born. And it has broken my heart to see how the enemy has so, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't look the same. We were, the, we were so clean and oh my gosh, it's like there's trash and it's like, oh my gosh, it doesn't even look the same. And so when we moved to Farmington, I thought, this is where we'll be retired, refiring, I don't want to say retired, refiring, you know, whatever that is, we're not ready. Um, yeah, but God, <laughs> winters, we're getting to where I just cry out to God, please look. <laughs> I feel like I'm cold all the time. Now I sit and people are like, oh, you're it's so hot there. And I'm like, I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to just sit under the umbrella or the awning or whatever with the heat. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to sit directly in it, you know, all the time, but occasionally. But I want to feel it. <laughs> I like the heat because I like the fire. So... <laughs> He's saying, sons and daughters, I love you. In Zephaniah 3.17. And first I'm going to read the New American Standard. I'm just going to read the one verse. The Lord your God was in your midst, a victorious warrior. He will exalt over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Now I'm going to read. Now I'm going to read 3.12-20. Read There's a reason I wanted to read 17 first. But I will leave among you a humble and lowly people, and they will take refuge in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel will do no wrong and tell no lies, nor will a deceitful tongue be found in their mouths, for they will feed and lie down with no one to make them tremble. Shout for joy, O daughter of Zion, shout in triumph, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away his judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. I'm announcing this to you, Global Harvest. He has cleared away your enemies. Hallelujah. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You will fear disaster no more. You will fear disaster no more. Hallelujah. In that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, Do not be afraid, O Zion. Do not let your hands fall limp. The Lord, your God, is in your midst. A victorious warrior. He will exult over you with joy. He will gather those who grieve about the appointed feast. They, they come from you. They came from you, O Zion. The reproach of exile is a burden on them. Behold, I am going to deal at that time with all 
your oppressors. Yes, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will turn their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you in, even at that time when I gather you together. Indeed, I will give you renown and praise among all yes. the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes. Thank you, Lord. Come on. <laughs> Listen to this in the message. This is Zephaniah 3, 16 and 17. Jerusalem will be told, Don't be afraid, dear Zion. Don't despair. Your God is present among you. Woo! A strong warrior there to save you. Happy to have you back. Happy to have you back. He'll calm you with his love and delight you with, your, with his songs. And then in the Amplified Classic, verse 17. The Lord your God is in the midst of you, a mighty one, a Savior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in silent satisfaction. And in his love he will be silent and make no mention of past sins or even recall them. He will exult over you with singing. This is God. He is a good, good father. We yeah, sing about it, but yeah. do we believe it? Right. I was telling my daughter about the eagles the day they came. I was talking to her that day, and I was just giggling. I was like a little girl who had just gotten the, 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 the very thing she longed for all her life. It was undone by his goodness. And I said to her, she says, Mom, that is so cool. And I sent it to one of my spiritual sons, and he's like, Mama, I love the way that you, you, know, you and God interact. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and I said to my daughter, he does this. I feel he's told me he does this because I do pay attention. And I do get excited, and I just, I'm like, Jesus, you're so good. Daddy, you're so good to me. I'm in my house. I'm just like, oh, this is so, oh. And, and I took one little video, and you can hear me going, oh, here comes another one. Oh, here comes another one. Oh, you know, and I'm like, oh, this is so awesome. And I'm out there where the dolphins are coming. Oh, what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? Whoa, well, what is this? And I was talking to Lily about the dolphins, and she's like, Tracy, dolphins represent intelligence. And the Lord spoke to me this morning and said, Tracy, tell my people I'm giving them the mind of Christ. Yeah. And they step into my joy and my delight, knowing yes. I delight in them. Yes. Knowing I delight in them. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then they're protectors. This is what he was showing me. Do you know, like, they will fight the sharks off. And the Lord is giving us a delight even to be able to Woo! speak in that place of delight where the enemy, like he says, I'm dealing with your oppressor yeah. far from you. Yeah. Do you know what this man came by and I met his wife um, when I, the first time I went over to the apartment and they were walking by and they said, can you believe this? Isn't this amazing? And I said, it's so good. God is so good. And he goes, in all the 12 years that we've lived here, we've never seen this. Oh. All the years. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm serious. All of creation groans for the sons of God. Let me tell you, the creation is wanting to see restoration. Riverside, where we moved to, had the most rain in the month of February, right after we signed on the house we were moving into, is when the rains began. I don't know. I, I mean, I could try to make that up, but I'm recognizing what God's doing in it, and I'm announcing yeah. it. Do you know what I'm saying? I may be just a little old me. <laughs> that God's just saying, you know what? She just believes. So right? let's get a company right? of believers around her, believing believers, who will believe in the goodness of God. Woo! And then God is brought through. So you know this is my third time. Third, third time, and I believe in a third day resurrection anointing. Uh, I believe in a third day glory. I believe that God says on the third day, He'll come like the rain. And He'll bring forth 
harvest. I believe that God wants to do something. So this year, I started out really good. I went to Brazil in March. This is crazy because the day we, we, we left on 222, we, we only went a few hours because we were really tired. But I was like, no, we would plan to move on this day. Even if we only go a couple hours, we are getting out of town. <laughs> right. And then it, we stopped again, and so we, we got into California on the 24th, but we, we couldn't get our keys to the house until the 27th. But my husband had to drop me off at night on the 26th, and by LAX, I had to stay in a hotel. So I was in 10 hotels between the time I left LA to the time when I finally got to be home <laughs> because I went to Brazil. The day I went to Brazil, he got the keys. I have a word over my life that was given to me years ago in a, in a, in a prayer gathering, a, a house of prayer worship type gathering in a, in a barn in Santa Rosa. A young man gave me a word. Nobody knew him. But he had the word of the Lord. And I have never forgot that word, and I carry it in my heart. And I look to see. And I've seen the Lord do it a few times in what he did in Brazil. And the word is when you see the rains and the streets are overflowing with water, with rain, and it looks like there's and it looks like it's flooding. No that the angel breakthrough has gone before you and God is going to move and revival is going to break out in the area. It was not supposed to rain when I looked at the weather, but by the time I was leaving and had already packed, <laughs> kind of like what happened last week, where for we're going to Texas first. Anyways, I get to, we get to Brazil and it, be, and it begins to rain on the day that we arrived. And so the first night we arrived, we had meetings, it is raining and raining and raining. And God moves in amazing ways. One word of knowledge. I mean, right. one word of knowledge right. that I got, and then the Lord gave details, and people were coming up, and it was like asking the translator, he's like, they're healed, they're healed, they're healed. Oh, <laughs> like fast, <laughs> not, you know what I'm saying? And when God comes that way, you know He's coming like the healing rain. Right. He's Lord. coming. He's there. He's here. The next day, we are out in another side. I was in the Rio area. And Carnival started the next day. And they had wanted me to come back. But as, as, uh, as Annie and Jamie know, I wait on the Lord for timing. <laughs> So it's been four years, three and a half years, three and a half years. Uh, no, is it? It's been four years since they wanted me to come during Carnival four years ago, or three and a half years, something like that. Anyways, it's been a while. But this was the time. So the next night, we're in this newer church, precious people, and the rain begins to come. <laughs> And the rain's coming down, and they're in an older building that they're just beginning to redo. And so the rain's coming through the roof. No big deal. I've been in that before. When you go on missions, this is... I've told people, you go on missions, and you're expecting maybe you're going to have hot water? <laughs> um, I take my silk sheets because I don't want bed bugs. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I pray the blood over everything. I have little travel sheets that fold up like this big, roll up into a little, and they're silk. And <laughs> they're wonderful. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Daddy takes care of his girl. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jesus. That's a whole other story. If I go down it, I'll lose my, my thoughts. So, <laughs> so we, I mean, the, I just... The moment I walked into that place, I was expecting. So it's a newer church, smaller church, but beautiful people, just lovely, lovely people. And passionate, passionate. And while the rain's coming, all of a sudden, the power goes out for a moment. Power goes out, comes on. And we just go on with worship. We don't, nobody stops, you know. I, I mean, I'm worshiping, so I'm not paying attention to what's going on. And as soon as I began to step up, there was warfare in the room. 
But remember, apostolic glory is apostolic prophetic authority. And you could feel the stuff, and as soon as I stepped up, it stopped. Like, not the ring, the warfare. <laughs> it was like, ooh, this is good. And we got major testimonies, okay, major testimonies for what was happening with people before and at that moment, what happened, like they felt like they were delivered. It was amazing what God did. It was gone. Yes. Yes. As you know, I'm telling you, I know there were a couple big angels with me that night. I couldn't feel them. And I'm like, thank God. So amazing meeting, empowerment, words, signs, wonders, healings, or... And then at the end, the pastor comes up. <coughs> bodies on the floor throughout. It was one of those kind of meetings, you know what that means? So Pat, he comes up and he says, what you don't know is that when the power went out here, it went out in the whole region, and it's still out in the region. Yeah. The church was the only place with lights on. Yeah. And it did not have a when we went out, because they were going to take me out, nothing was open. <laughs> they had a hard time. We're going to feed you. you know? And uh, I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. I have snacks in my room. You know, what's up? No, no. And we're driving, and we get to one place. We can't get down the road. There's so much rain in the streets. The water is just everywhere. There is so much rain. And that was the first night of carnival. So guess what? With all that rain, some of the block parties were what? Canceled. 31%, 32%, something like that. Crime rate went down during this carnival. Oh, Woo! Great. People have been going there for years, so I'm not saying I'm the old. You know, I'm just saying God showed up. He sent an angel. Yes. And I truly believe that a move of God in Rio, it's going to be just shake. I mean, the nation has seen a lot, but Rio is still the same. There hasn't been transformation there yet. I believe it has begun. And that nation is stepping into transformation just as we're stepping into transformation. But don't be surprised that the wicked is really angry and there's a lot of pus and a lot of yuck and a lot of that. You know? Because there's a battle and we're in a war. But when you're in a war, remember, God's scattering your enemies. Yeah. And he's doing for you. And he's going to give you things that, that as you remember, because, you know, the next time I go through a trial or a war or whatever, I need to remember the goodness of what he's doing in my life right now. You know what I'm saying? And he's promised us. You know, when, the, when we had that... Financial crash was at 2008 and all of that. My husband and I really went through it. I mean, it was it was rough. And then the enemies attacked my ministry. Crazy. <coughs> Partners, friends, all this stuff. Lies spread. You know, and it's like, oh my gosh, I, 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 oh Lord, how are we going to do this? You know what I'm saying? Well, I believe now is the day where the enemy tried to stop it and tried to get into it. You know, just throw in the towel. Now's the day because we didn't give up and we overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. The word of our testimony and laying our God lives down for love. Not loving our own life, right? Mm -hmm. Lay your life down for love. He's doing things. He is coming and he is delighting over you. I just want to give you a couple more scriptures that I um, really felt were significant to speak over you. Oh, so the other thing about the dolphins, okay? They come in, like, their schools, they're, they're, it's about community. They come together. They, they, they don't, they're not, they're not lone rangers. <laughs> and is it, wasn't that a sign? Because I never saw 12 eagles together like that. Whenever we go out eagle watching into the, onto um, the bay, Farmington Bay, where they would come, you, you might see two together, but you would see one over here, two there maybe, so over here, but you never saw like this. There were like five in one tree, and then a couple over here, and a couple over here. So I didn't think about pano picture, because I should have taken a pano. I just had this picture, this picture, this, because I was just so excited, you know. <laughs> I was just like, oh, later I'm going, oh, I should have done one of those panos. <laughs> That's a panoramic for those of us. I didn't know. You probably all know, but I just was, was the other day going, what are you doing? 
Oh, I could have done that. They communicate with the frequency. Father sings over us and releases. He delights over us. He exalts over us and releases the, his frequency. He speaks his word over us and implants our DNA with his frequency. We are to communicate with the frequency of the Father's heart. We are to be those that release that sound. We are not to be discordant. We are to be harmony with heaven. We are to carry the Father's yes and the Father's joy and the Father's love, no matter what it looks like. Because that dismantles the enemy's strategies. And God is that good. He is so good. The Lord delights in you. In Isaiah 62, Isaiah 62, the Father delights in you. Starting in verse 1, For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not keep quiet until her righteousness goes forth like the brightness and her salvation like a torch that is burning. The nations will see your righteousness and all kings your glory. And you will be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord will designate. You will also be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. And it will no longer be said to you forsaken, nor will your land any longer be called desolate, but you will be called, my delight is in her, which is Hephzibah, my delight is in her. And your land married, for the Lord delights in you. And to him your land will be married. For a young man marries a virgin, so your sons will marry you, and as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so your God will rejoice over you. The Lord delights in 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 you. That is the frequency of the Father's heart. And if we could allow that to penetrate Every place where the enemy is wounded, every place where he has caused a breach, there is a healing yeah. balm from the Father's love that is sealing and healing up every breach and making you whole and bringing forth the goodness of God. Yeah. If God can do it for a little me, why not you? He is no respecter of persons. You see, I'm a breakthrough person. I go and I break through, and you get to come in behind me. Amen. And you get your breakthrough. I Amen. come in and I help you get your breakthrough. The breaker goes before us. That's one of the names of God. He is a breaker. He is the one who's moving on our behalf, and he delights in us. Think about the day that... There they are, and here comes Jesus, and John the Baptist baptizes Jesus, and a voice booms from heaven and says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Lord is booming from heaven and saying, These are my sons and daughters. They're mine, and I'm about to move on their behalf. I've already begun. Open your eyes. Delight in me as I delight in you and see what I'm doing. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Forget the former things. Forget what is behind. Forget your past. Your past is your past. Your past is your past. And if the enemy tries to throw it in your face, say, oh no, that's under the blood. Amen. And you can remind him that he goes to the feet of Jesus in his future and is thrown into a lake of fire. Amen. 
Your past is your past. It is finished. It is under the blood. Hallelujah. What people did to us in the past is under the blood. Amen. What people have spoken about us in the past is under the blood. And it will bear no more fruit. It withers and dies and has no power because the blood of Jesus is greater than that. And so the blessing and the voice of the one who booms from heaven, the boom of the Father, the boom of his voice, the boom of his glory, the boom of who what he's wanting to do, the boom that lays flat the enemy's plans is being released over you. And let me tell you, it's like the lion that roars and the enemy scatters. So that frequency of the Father's heart will bring healing to your own heart. So wherever the enemies try to shut down your heart, I just release the delight of the yes, Father. I just release the delight of heaven over you. And I just declare that through the blood of Jesus, because this is the blood covenant mantle, that I just I just had to have a, a new one because my other one, somebody wanted it, and and I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, they actually felt they were to buy it, so uh, and they were going on this whole journey, and I was like, okay, so I finally got a new blood covenant one, but it's different than my other one, but. It's just that I want to raise it up to get you to understand. Look to the blood of Jesus who's made a way for you, who's purchased you, brought you back to the Father, who brings you into healing and wholeness and freedom. The blood of the Passover lamb that you need to put over your household Lord. and say, Lord. death shall not land yes, here, it yes, shall pass. Yes. Amen. No evil can come through the blood. Hallelujah. Oh, how the Father loves us that he sent his only son. His only son. That's how much he loves us. That if we would believe in him, we would live. We would be saved. Sozo, healed, delivered have eternal life. Lord, thank you, God. When I was prophesying during worship, I was telling Apostle Prophet, <laughs> Apostle Prophet, I was telling Apostle I had and I'm doing this for a reason, <laughs> Prophet Jamie, I was telling them that I'm contending for a 55 mile radius of the Lord's presence. Wow. Glory. And all of a sudden in worship, he's like, declare it for here. Amen. A 55 mile radius. So say if this is the center and the hub, everywhere out, just get a map. And I've been asking him for a 55 mile radius so when I go somewhere, the enemy can't even come within those 55 miles Lord. because the presence of the Lord will go with me. I haven't got it yet, but I'm contending. You now have a prophetic yes. promise because he said to declare that for you. And you can contend for that because you war with the promises. You believe them, you decree them, you agree with them. Do you want that? Do you want to be yes, that apostolic Lord. prophetic yes. hope where the glory of the Lord brings in the harvest and keeps the devil at bay? Yes. I'm telling you, this is our portion. Yes. There are going to be real yes. cities of refuge and sanctuary. Yes. And there are going to be places where lawlessness can't even come in when people want to be in lawlessness. What would it look like to see a whole city never be lawless again? It's happened before in Wales. Why not here? Why not now? It's happened before in Wales. Why not here? Why not now? Hallelujah! God, do it again. Do it again. So I'm going to close. I'm 
awaken and raise up. We will awaken the dawn as we rise up with the voice of freedom. In unison, the sound of righteousness and truth. For we have heard the call and say yes. We are children of the Most High God. He is our Holy Father. We have no other gods before us. We bow our hearts to this loving King. We rise up together with a clear voice, resonating with the frequency of heaven, filled with harmonies of love and grace, a resounding voice of hope for all, a voice filled with his pure love, a voice releasing faith to believe. That's you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. With one voice, we rise up and cry out, God, forgive our sins, heal our land, end abortion, and send revival to America again. A renaissance of hearts awakening the dawn as we rise up bringing holy reformation, transforming lives and saving nations. True justice and liberty for all, a holy love illusion, the sound of holy love declarations, stopping hate and prejudices lies, healing broken hearts, mending the breaches separating us, breaking the power of every curse, through the blood of Jesus Christ, called to be radiant, free, and brave. We are a global company, blessed to be a blessing. We rise up carrying truth's banner, releasing the sound and setting captives free. We shine with Christ's pure love light, a beacon of hope in the midst of chaos bringing safe passage out of the storm. We're a lighthouse of love and refuge. Awakening the dawn with the call to rise up, we cry out, come home, sons and daughters. Your father is waiting with arms open wide. Psalm 108, 1 through 6 says, my heart is steady. I will sing, I will sing praises even with my soul. Awake, harp and lair. I will awake in the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. And I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is great above the heavens, and your truth reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory above all the earth that your beloved may be delivered. That your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and answer me. Oh, we're in awakening. <laughs> Let's not let it stop. Let's keep decreeing declaring and agreeing with God that his beloved would be delivered. Let's give him praise. <laughs> you were, when you were singing, that's when I knew I'm sharing the stories. Because we were singing about the wonders. And in the word, and it's like, I have to tell you how good he is. Because you need your seeds watered to believe. So I've watered you with faith today. Yeah. And I've sprinkled hope. And God is awakening you to the depths of his love and how he delights over you. And how when he looks at you, he says, you're the apple of my eye. And Israel's the apple of his eye, but... So are you. Amen. He delights in you. He really, really delights in you. Mm -hmm. So much. And when you look
lay down and say, okay, I'll lay this down and I'll come over here and I'll serve. There's such a delight in the Father and he's turning things around. Things that did try to hold you back, he has loosed you from them. And because you've been obedient to say, I'm going to go where I'm needed and I'm going to go where you're calling and I'm going to go away from my unknown and I'm going to step into the unknown and I'm taking my family and they don't know what's going on but they're going to be blessed because they honored you and loved you and God is wanting you to know that there are some things that are about to happen that they're going to be like those surprise gifts that you forgot you even wanted. <laughs> and there's restitution and restoration. And there's things that have been spoken that he says, Asana. And the voice of the Lord and the decree of God over your life is blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. Don't mess with my blessed and highly favored. And a newer and stronger and greater anointing to see deliverance and healing and salvation is coming over your lives. <laughs> Where there's been some you've had to wrestle with. You're just going to be able to go like this and say that. Or like this and say be gone in Jesus' name. Because of the process that you've embraced and the obedience, God is now releasing a greater and stronger anointing of himself. A Gideon taking possession where the Lord clothes you with himself and says, you are mine. And don't just ask me for your needs. What do you want? What do you want? I was sharing this weekend. I've got to get on my computer and send it out. I do a birth month blessing. And for many, I feel like this one's for all of us. You know, I, I've been doing this for a few years. The Lord asked me to do it a few years ago when I was in Israel. He said, would you write a birth month blessing every month to overturn <laughs> what the enemy does with the zodiac and do all that stuff? You know, with the whole, that's, he's like, I want to bless my people. And this month when I, when I was sitting with him last week, he said, may, Tracy. And, and the word may is special to me because a friend of mine years ago, she calls me Tracy May. She says, because the father says to you, Father, may I? He wants you to do this. Well, he said to me, I, it's the game we play, Father, may I? And he said that this month he wants to invite his children to say, Father, may I? Because he's re ready to say, yes, you may. Yes, you may. Father, may I? There's dreams that you've had in your heart. Father, may I do this? Is it this okay? Yes, you may. Because you've been through the process and some things almost crushed you. And now Daddy wants you to have some delight. But the thing is, if we don't ask, we don't receive. He says, you have not, because you ask not. But there's things we've asked for in the past, okay? Like, hello, the beach apartment. Do you know how much those places are over there? I mean, somebody else is paying for it. <laughs> Five months. Why's the number of grace? Come on. Woo! I am like... Lord, I haven't even asked for that in a long time. You know, I've, I've had said, well, maybe I'll be by local one day. And I thought it was in Utah, the beach in California. But God. And so it's like this five months of, okay, setting up the home over here. And then go over there and sit in the sand and write. Yes, you may. Yes, you may. And some of you are going, my dad was never like that. Well, you know what? God's not your dad. Yeah. So, Lord, we love and we forgive. And our earthly fathers, we all messed up. There's not a perfect parent. I tried so hard, and I didn't get set free until how long into their lives, and Oh, goodness, I tell them sometimes, if you ever need healing or says, oh, I'm here, I'll take you wherever you want to go. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> you know, 
I was reading the books. I was seeking the Lord once I came to know him. <laughs> but even then. <laughs> so, yay. Thank God I have a good relationship with my kids. <laughs> so this is a time of wonder. This is a time to believe and receive. So I just bless that, Daddy, in the name of Jesus. But you are the one who's bringing us in to an awakening and a place of wanting to delight us with surprises. Lord, you know how much some of the things of the past season crushed our hearts. But you're like, no, baby girl, no, no, my baby boy, no, my son, no, my daughter, no, mighty man, no, mighty woman. You're, you're not, you're not that. You may be weak, but in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. And I kept Thank you, Father, for doing that for this place and this house. And, Father, that this is going to be the most astounding week. And, Father, even though it may be busy and the next few weeks may have a lot going on, Father, there's a slipstream in heaven. If we can just get in that flow with you, there's a place with you and on that slipstream of heaven. Lord, it's like getting in behind where the jet goes. and the, There's that stream. There's that slipstream. And you don't even have to do this with your wings. You just get on that stream and you just say, oh, I can. Yes, Lord, I can do all things. Show me which part to do. Yes, Lord. Yeah, oh, wow, Lord, I got through all. Wow, we did all that. Wow, wow, wow. I'm releasing that to you. Over you. <laughs> and I release that to you. And so there was this one line in the first phrase, and it was about the oil of glory, that it brings you joy. And I released that over this house, that there would be a oil of glory that would flow continually, that would bring joy. That would bring joy, that would bring freedom, that would bring joy, that would bring healing, that would bring an ease, no matter what it looks like on the left or on the right. Remember, Daddy's eyes. <laughs> Just one gaze will change everything. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Specifically, of course, the first time she came, she came strategically undercover and dealt with something that we've been warring against. Every time she comes, it is very, very strategic. Now, uh, we're going to get ready to take an offering for her in just a moment. I'll go ahead and say that. If you want to give, you can make checks payable to Global Harvest. All of that will go to her. But I, I just want to say that... Um, you know, when she was she was talking about the angel of awakening and all of those things and that the angel comes in the storm. And, of course, she's ministering Wednesday night in Rockwall, a church that we're very connected to relationally. And um, what happened Wednesday? What happened here in Ardmore? Um, we were in our cellar praying, and we came out. And if you haven't seen my Facebook video... Yeah. We couldn't believe what had happened in the 30 to 45 minutes we were in the cellar. I, I've seen that happen in our, my parents' property that from now on. I've seen that happen maybe once in our lifetime after weeks of rain. The overflow. There, there's something of awakening that's touching our city, our region. So... I just decree that we're moving. I, I've been very aware in the last week that the season changed. Yeah. Yeah. The last four years of a time of restoration, of healing, all of those things, something has completely changed. So um, hold on. Some of you things are going to happen so fast that you're going to be like, whoa, wait a minute, Lord. And remember that you said, whoa. <laughs> remember that you asked for this moment. Amen? Amen. All right. So let's take up an offering for Tracy. Let's sow into her. We're just really thankful for what the Father's doing. So, Father, we just 
give in faith, Lord, we sow into the anointing for breakthrough. Yes. Father, we sow into what you're doing in the nations. God, we sow for what you're doing even into California. Lord, we sow into harvest. Father, we sow into those things today. And Lord, we just thank you for the word that you've released over us today, that you've re released over us as a, as a church, or what you've released over our city and over our region. And we just give you glory today, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, yes, take that up. And some of you saw my, you know, you get on prophets and crazy things happen, but um, last night I woke up and I always checked my Fitbit to see how much sleep I got. You know, and I got five hours and 55 minutes on 5-5. Five, five. Is that mega grace? That's five fives, right? Crazy, crazy. So, hallelujah. God's just doing crazy stuff, and we just rejoice. Yes, sir. On the 55, yes. I got a weather advisory and left 55 a.m. when Tracy was talking about the lamp rain. Said light shower at 11:55. Say that again. At 11:55, the weather channel gave me an alert. There's a light shower coming, and that's exactly when Tracy was talking about the rain. Amen. Praise God. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make it up. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great week, and we uh, we'll see you. If some of us see many of you tomorrow, uh, but we'll see you next week. Amen. Be blessed and have a great week. Praise God. And remember, if you need um, prophetic ministry, we'll have our prophetic team here. And if you have need for physical healing, come and receive prayer from our physical healing team. Amen. Bless you guys.